Ooh, what is up you guys and of course as always welcome back to another video from your truly that's character and yeah as you guys can see on the title this video is going to focus on the biggest meta changes in this generation and while it's being subjective um there are only four changes i think i really really appreciate more than others and the last one is probably the one i appreciate more the other three being things that matters but aren't as impactful in my personal opinion that said, I had this video actually planned over a month ago as I thought the meta was starting to stagnate and, you know, make sense. But uh, I wanted to wait to Pokemon Hound to see, you know, with Defog and whatnot, you know, if we get more Pokemon. So I know there are more Pokemon in uh, that was in the game that isn't here now. But it turns out the DLC came before it. And all of a sudden, a few of my points here, while good, are only going to matter as long as the DLC isn't out. So bear that in mind. Some of these changes will shift radically with Yoon's release and uh, continue onward. That's just going to, well, keep on changing. So all of armor is absolutely going to be a um, meta-defining change itself. But with that said, this can, of course, cover my personal opinions of the biggest change of this meta and why I think so. So with that said, enjoy the list, guys. So what was actually the one that won the vote on Twitter and was my second highest pick was the lowered speed tier aspect to the meta. Now it goes without saying, the lowered speed tier had meant that a lot of Pokemon that was deemed too slow or didn't have the capabilities to shift off offensive threats because they were slower than that offensive threat. They are now radically more viable. Uh, we're looking at the likes of Meowal for example who was really risky in last generation to be Phenomenal this generation. And of course, Cinderace stands out. Jardos all of a sudden is to be deemed a um, pretty, I would say, you know, middle on the road speed tier. It actually is that badly that Hydreigon could be defined as speedy this generation, which last generation it wasn't. And of course, you got other things to it, make it more viable, but there are things here to consider. Pokemon that were kind of on the grasp of being UU in the last generation now are. Firm OU because they have such a high damage output and are speedy enough to make a solid uh, dent on most team. It's actually interesting to see how much a lowered speed tier to meta do affect certain threats and then how good they can become because of that. Now, as stated, due to the Olive Armor and the DLC that will continue on, or the, the speed tier that is lower now are going to be raised, and they're very likely that the Pokemon that are very viable now might be forced to be moved down because that these faster offensive threats aren't as defensive in the first place and being slower means that you are forced to take hits that you're not built for and um, that's just going to continue so um, enjoy it while it lasts i was really hoping it that that change in itself wasn't changing but sadly that's probably the most likely thing to go away first but right now this is one of the best part of this meta till june Another big change that actually might not have been considered right now are the terrain nerf. Terrain was in generation 6 and 7 a 50% boost of that type move basically. Um, electric terrain boosted electric type move with 50% and now they're nerfed to 30% instead. So it is a significant weakened aspect but the Pokemon right now that uses terrain aren't that viable with it. Uh, look at it like in DD, which might actually be the only Pokemon worthwhile using with Psychic Train. It is used with the train in mind, but it's like I said, the only Pokemon that actually might be able to do that. Uh, Pink Churchin, uh, the electric, um, well, Spike Ball, uh, <laughs> Sea Urchin, is uh, all things considered not that good in with terrain. While it is a good comrade to Halucha, it isn't, um, you know, it's no Coco, it doesn't have that damage output. And although Galarian Weezing was going to say alone, but Galarian Weezing always want to have Levitate, so missed the search while being good. Yeah, how good can it be? Um, it, it, it's one of those things. Um, it doesn't fall to it naturally. And of course, we got the last one, Rillaboom, who doesn't have gone in grassy terrain yet. So, yeah, none of these Pokemon are that very good with terrain. While they will allow the lower tiers to most likely have a terrain accessibility, it goes without saying that a damage nerf. And Pokemon not viable with the nerf. Yeah, they, they stand out as Pokemon not that interesting. However, once the fall comes and of course the Tundra DLC comes out, we're going to have Coco, Bolo, Lele, and Feeny accessible to us. And there is where the nerf will or will not matter. 
there are things to consider here with the C moves gone and Trey nerfed. The the absolute huge boof from these Pokemon are no longer there. Hell, Lele might be considered quite balanced this generation, who knows? And Coco's damage output being lowered. It has a low special attack and that absolutely goes to damage it somewhat. And Bulo's of course offensive prowess with you know bulk up and of course grassy MC, it's no longer there. While I absolutely think these Pokemons are viable in their own rights, it is whether or not how much less viable they will be with this terrain nerf. And I'm actually looking forward to see it. I don't believe the Pokemon will be no less than OU for sure. But knowing that they are not as prowning and powerful will mean that the other Pokemon will have the time to shine. But uh, yeah, the Coco Lucha combo is coming back, but it's going to be weaker. And that's something I absolutely appreciate. And another big change is probably a meta defining one for sure. Ghost and Psychics got buffed, but that's not really the entire truth. Pursuit is gone from the game. That's probably what I should call this instead. But what happened when Pursuit was gone? Ghost and Psychic types are now more viable. They are able to stay in. There are ghost types now that are able to not feel threatened by setting up and being pursuit trapped or they can still be sucker punched for sure but knowing that you can get out means that there are now really frail Pokemon such as Dragapult, Gengar that can get out of this that bad situation. One thing I really hope to see are the Hoopa coming back, the Hoopa Confined who are ridiculed and dying naturally of a pursuit. It doesn't have to be that way no more. And yeah, one could say that Dark Times got kind of nerfed with this. But I wouldn't necessarily go all that way. Dark Types are still as threatening, but they are with one less credibility. And that credibility was of course that the Ghosts and Psychics now offensively can stay in. Now there are other Pokemon that will be interesting that aren't confirmed for this game. But I'm looking at the likes of Alakazam and kind of realize that this is a Pokemon that now probably all of the time will carry... Life, life, life Orb, because why would you go for Sash now? There are basically no reason, and yeah, Cold Barberry might not actually be an option no longer for Jellies and Das. It doesn't have to worry about getting out when it can burn something before it. So there are a lot of things to consider here, but one thing I personally appreciate is that we know that the wall breakers of the Ghost of Psychic typing are now able to stay in and do what they were built to do without being worried of being forced out, because if they now are forced out, they don't have to worry. They can't get out of a bad situation, which is something they haven't been able to do since the second generation. That's a big plus for them, consider that now they are now back to what extreme monsters they were in generation one. N nowhere near as viable, but just being more viable is such a big thing for them. And I couldn't be happier. I really couldn't. And now for what I consider the biggest change is generation. And I thought I would call it first just heavy duty boots implementation of the game. But that's not really cutting it right. The reason heavy duty boots is good is because all of a sudden we have flying, fire, bug, and ice types that can pull a defensive role. Um, the best calling right now in this meta would be to define that Rotom Heat is actually more viable than Rotom Wash. And why is that? It's a Pokemon that naturally loves piloting, but due to its Stealth Rock weakness, it hasn't been able to do that. Now it can, it does that naturally and it's really good. The other one being of course, as you can see on the screen, Arcanine and Avalug. Pokemons that are able to recover HP, but are naturally not able to switch in if Stealth Rock just hits on the field. They're now able to pull that off. They don't need to worry, they can actually switch in, take a hit and recover. Force Pokemon out. Before. They could have been in a you know, range where they were 2 hit KO'd just because of the hazards on the field. And of course, Avalog stands out a bit more here as it does not only have recover but has rapid spin. So it turns out it's a fair spinner. While it's, they are no by ideal the best Pokemon out there, just that they got in that much better because of one item, it's great. Um, for anybody who's followed False Swipe Gaming, they know Generation 4 defined how good a Pokemon could be defensive just because of Stealth Rocks. It defined a whole generation and have kept doing that onward. This generation, there was a 
clear stop for that. To where Pokemon that now can come in and pull a defensive role. Pokemon that are built to be defensive haven't been able to do that because of their typing. We're looking at the likes of Articuno, Moltres, Pokemon that are coming to this game in this future. They can now pull a defensive role naturally. Look at the Articuno. We have now heavy duty boots together with pressure and roost. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's going to be awesome. It's nowhere ideal, but it's now able to pull off something that it hasn't been able to do in like forever and been forgotten due to it. Moltres, one of the best anti rain Pokemon and one of the best Defogger, can now be the best Defogger. It's so cool to know that there are Pokemons out there, there absolutely are more, like Trogonal, I, I can just keep on getting it. But there are Pokemon that are good defensively, they can't pull it because of their typing. They no longer have that issue. That will also mean that there are offensive threats that are forced to deal with Pokemons they could deal with passively before. And they, they can no longer do. And people worry about Landers. Avelog is now secured, it's here, it doesn't worry. And it's so cool. I'm actually getting worked up just talking about it. It's just... The change it makes is that we now have a full roster of Pokemon that can naturally come into stuff that doesn't have an alternative team plan to work. And if that team member falls, the squad itself falls. That's not an issue no more. And that is great. It's incredible. It means there are Pokemon that are so much more usable this generation because they aren't hazard weak naturally. Yes, some Pokemon do prefer leftovers, some prefer life orb, but knowing that you don't have to, that's a strength. So yeah, and that's the list. I really hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, and what are you for thoughts, of course? Are there some changes in there that you really appreciate the thing or meta to find that I missed out? Do tell, I'd love to know them. So with that said, thank you for watching as always, and take care. Bye guys.